Hello, everybody, and welcome to another webinar. It's absolutely terrific, terrific to see you. And thank you so much for joining us at what must be, gosh, an incredibly challenging time. Lots of hard work being done, lots of concern being shown for all of your students and all your colleagues. And one can only imagine um, how difficult it must be, but also how rewarding it is to see the children again. And we really are most appreciative of seeing you again and welcoming you to another one of our webinars, which is, uh, we're in for a treat today. Let's create a little oasis in the next 45 minutes of, uh, of interest and fun. And we have a, a really warm and very kind-hearted speaker. Uh, one of my favorites, and uh, more on that in a moment. Um, absolutely thrilled to welcome him today. Um, we're gonna be talking uh, about the Agile Teacher and we'll be explaining what that means. In fact, I'll let our special guests explain what that means in a moment. Um, during this conversation, you'll hear us talk about pathway. Those of you on the call who have not perhaps heard that word before, uh, you may not know that it's actually a new teacher development program looking at both personal and professional development of teachers and leaders, looking at their well-being and motivation and aspiration and their resilience, as well as their professional skills. And it's live today, it's very exciting. First of October, later today, the whole platform goes live and is launching in school. So uh, uh, a tremendous day to be talking to, to one of our guests who is actually an author on the Pathway program as well. During this conversation, if you'd like to uh, find out more, please visit the website. Uh, you can see at the bottom there, that URL will also be uh, presented as a link on the chat stream by my colleagues throughout this discussion. So you can uh, find out more from the, from the website there and you can actually sign up uh, and order a pathway program if you so wish. Um, be great to see you on the website there uh, and leave your details. Or you can join the discussion as well. Uh, hashtag the whole teacher is the phrase that we're using on social media and you'll see lots of interesting conversations around how we support and celebrate the whole teaching, which is really what Pathway is all about. So it, without further ado, absolutely delighted to welcome uh, Hal Roberts, um, who I hope can join us now. Yeah, uh, there you to see you there. Great to Hello. see you. Thank you very much for joining us today. Looking very smart. Thanks, Andrew. I like to make the effort for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's flattered. great to see you. It's great really to see you. It's great to see you too. I mean, these these meetings and so forth that we all have to do now online, it's, um, yeah. it's, uh, it's just so reassuring to see another face there, isn't it? You know, smiling. And uh, I think it's really important. Yeah. And I've never actually, I've had so many conversations with you and I've been lucky enough to have met you lots of times. But um, I've never actually met you when, you ha when you've been in a grump. I can't imagine you are, actually. <laughs> You're a tremendously positive, optimistic person. Well, so. I, I like to think I am. I, I like to think I am, mate. And, and uh, we need a bit of optimism, don't we? And I think it's a key, key teacher skill. I think it is as well, actually. <laughs> it is, isn't it? There are, yeah. Teacher's optimism is, is built of oak, I think, really. Yeah. And yours especially. So uh, it's going to be really good to hang out with you for 45 minutes. It Thank really you. Is. Thanks for having so, me along. Why don't we kick off, if, if it's okay with you, just telling us a little bit about your career today, your professional experiences, and, uh, and kind of what drives you, really? Um, well, I, I was a, a secondary teacher, secondary English teacher, for a long, long time in, um, in a, a South Yorkshire secondary school. Barnsley in South Yorkshire and I talk about that experience of teaching there and in other schools in, in, in Yorkshire as well. I talk about it a lot. I reflect now, even now I'm reflecting on my experiences back then. I taught full time for 16 years um, and I, I think um, if, you know, I, I, I articulate um, a huge learning experience in my writing really I, I reflect all the time on it um about what what i experienced um particularly in the school in barnsley from everything about meeting different types of kids to working with different types of people to thinking about different types of curriculum i mean i was an english teacher i taught drama um due to a timetabling error i, I taught german for a year that was a total chuffing nightmare um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I tell that joke a lot. So I taught there for ages, and um, and then something happened. I was I was something called um, an advanced skills teacher, which some people watching this will remember. Basically, you had your own inspection, um, and uh, the inspectors interviewed children and 
parents and other staff. It's kind of a 360 degree evaluation on you. And then if you passed, you were kind of given this label of um, an advanced skills teacher or an AST. So I was, uh, I were really happy um, in my classroom, basically. I, I think I was, we were doing a lot of research at my school before it became de rigueur, if you like, before it became the thing that everyone talks about now and, and rightfully. Uh, but we were researching all the time. We had really good links to um, Sheffield Uni and Sheffield Hallam Uni because uh, those were our closest unis. And um, I was really excited about stuff. Uh, I was really excited about my practice. Um, and uh, I was kind of anti-cynical, even though, I, I, you know, like any teacher, I was able to be cynical as well and be unhappy about the state of things. But rather than just sit moaning about it, I kept trying to change things. Um, but one of the things I couldn't change was the sort of career ladder. And there was a bit of, I think there was a kind of, expectation that the AST role was a leapfrog to senior leadership and having spent some time on senior leadership I realized it wasn't for me now that doesn't mean I mean I work with brilliant leaders I'm, I'm confident in that I've worked with brilliant leaders but I also was really keen on classroom and I realized at that time and I'm going back a few years now at that time the only way I could really continue my exploration of what goes on in class whilst if you like developing my career and myself as, a, as an educationalist was I had to leave my school <laughs> which was kind of heartbreaking um and I ended up uh, working in special setting as what I can describe now. This wasn't my official title, but I was kind of a consultant teacher. Yeah. Um, paid, if you like, a daily rate. <laughs> They'll have got it from some budget. And I worked on curriculum and engagement. Right. And that, that, that's where I, in the special settings, that's where I really learned a lot and was starting to be able to articulate the experiences I'd had in the preceding years. And then from that, because of the nature of the school uh, and its partner schools, uh, I found myself working a lot with primary age children, which was a bit of a, a revelation for me, really. I'd, I'd not even considered working with younger children, but I found I absolutely loved it. There was a little boy in a class who just said, um, Mr. Roberts, why do we have to learn about Romans? They're ages ago. And he were right. He was called Maxwell, that kid. And he were right. And the thing is, with that, with that question, that's what's triggered everything else for me. How do we, if you like, get kids hooked into learning? How do we get them bothered about content and complexity that doesn't seem that important when you're seven <laughs> you know so um i think that's been the driver for me um when you asked me that question so my professional experience as, as i've ended up sitting here talking to you and i'm not actually sure how it's happened other than i i've i, I got the i was privileged to be asked to write a book before you know, the education book market got really busy with people writing books about it. I wrote one just really, really hard on sleeve, uh, a book um, called Oops. And that's still still going on, you know, and, and people still go back to that. And I, I, I loved it. And that, if you like, kick-started me doing, um, staying in classroom. I'm, I still, I'm working in class next week. I'm in a primary school next week, modelling inclusive and inductive practice that's what i'm doing next week um but uh I, I get to do this as well which i enjoy doing great thank you yeah and it's a terrific read actually it's, it's a really good oh, really 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 interesting book it's um refreshingly authentic and honest uh, and fun as well actually with some um with some lovely tips and strategies as well it's a cracking book and mm -hmm. i can hear you saying it actually it's one of those books i can actually hear you saying it um, well, listen, you, 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 you've been lucky. I mean, we've been lucky enough to, to get you to contribute um, a whole course on one of the one of multiple courses on the Pathway Programme. And yours is called The Agile Teaching. We'll get into that in a moment, actually. But yeah. um, as part of the preparation for this, we actually um, you, we, we were lucky enough to get you to write an article on the NHT Hub. Uh, and those on the call who haven't seen it yet, please do uh, get straight to the NHT Hub. 
um, which obviously, as you'll know, I'm sure, is, is filled with um, uh, cracking articles, really, really interesting thought pieces and so forth. And, and Hal, you've done one of those um, yeah. in which you say, actually, how do we create a teacher workforce who, as well as doing everything we need them to do, also sees the big picture that transcends expectations around risk-free classroom delivery and allows the development of rich professional imagination. That's a really big sentence and it's a really big thought. And um, I wonder if you could just expand on it for two or three minutes. What, what is the stone in your shoe here? What, what is it that's, uh, that you're driving at? What needs to change? I, I, I'm... I don't think it's not a maverick statement and no. uh, I'm certainly not a maverick uh, or anything like that but I think what we've got to be mindful of particularly in teacher development teacher education and when I say teacher development I'm talking about the the continuing professional development of teachers that we're not actually trying to build one size fits all teachers. We don't want robot teachers. And it's a bit of a cliched argument now, but I think that it exists and it's a bit of a cliche because there's truth in it. And I think words that we, um, we, we things that we forget about, we, we, <laughs> We get distracted, I think, professionally by fads. We get distracted by um, the current agendas of any government, you know, in any country. This is what we're concentrating on. Um, I, I, I worry that, uh, that that lovely word phrenesis, um, the development and acquisition of professional wisdom, phrenesis, that is something that we don't pay enough attention to. And it can sometimes become the domain of people who seem um, more uh, professionally privileged than the classroom practitioner. So if you like, teachers aren't often allowed or invited into the citadel where all the thinking happens and actually are just um, given the scraps to deal with in in classrooms and we see and yet the classroom should be where all the action is and, and, and a lot of the thinking we need the strategy definitely and you know we need all the strategy uh, the big organizational stuff behind us but as teachers we, we need to be allowed to professionally breathe and develop so that we shift from being effective teachers and that's great and this is from the work of Ian Mentor we go from the effective teacher and we we're allowed to develop to being the transformative teacher and that's something i talk a lot about in me in my pathway does that make I sense think, oh that makes perfect sense and it's absolutely fascinating that you're suggesting that though it isn't at the moment the classroom can and should be the crucible the place where new policies and practices are forged and formed but they're because they're informed by the reality of doing the job isn't it yeah Rather and top down policy and absolutely mate and it's it's too complex it's 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 almost too complex to sum up now in a conversation because it's 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 like there's too much um there's too much going on you know one class in where i where i work a lot in barnsley in south yorkshire a year eight in south yorkshire is going to be different from a year eight in suffolk or in ireland or in wisconsin it's going to be you know there's complexities and and things to be dealt with but i think as i think if we can really invest in teacher wisdom and teacher agility which is being able Able to be quite flexible and reactive um, sensibly reactive um, if, we, if we can start those conversations then we'll be doing our kids justice well I think that that could could not have been so beautifully articulated and illustrated by the scenario that happened a few weeks ago and we shouldn't dredge up what happened in the past but when when it was I'm talking about A-levels when it was judged that the teachers own um, assessments, their own judgment, would not be as good as an algorithm. And so it was flipped and turned into that algorithm and, the, and then the results were obviously overturned. And literally, literally, um, uh, teachers' own judgments were, were downgraded. And then that was flipped back again. And then I think there was a decision made, wasn't there, that um, I know we should become too political, I suppose. Mm. Well, why not? <laughs> 
why not? Um, we know what we're talking about. Um, but I think um, it was interesting, and that was illustrated so nicely, wasn't it, that there was then that reinvestment in the teacher trust again. Do, do you know what I mean? That, yeah. Well, actually, it's okay, you do know what you're doing, and we will go with your original yeah. grade. Yeah. <laughs> and it seemed quite humble in that. And it was, we were punching the air as teachers, thinking, ah, we've got, we're trusted again. But yeah, it's it's a, trust is a is a big thing, and it and it's all wrapped up in this complexity. I keep saying that about uh, about prof- the professional trust, professional wisdom, professional imagination, all these things that that pile in together to create a, a, a decent classroom teacher. Gradually, we're kind of we're humanizing teaching now what i mean by that is teachers are already the most human humane people i know they act in loco parentis every day they 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 really are but what we're doing is we're giving them license and we're recognizing the humanity in teaching we're recognizing that on the receiving end of a cbd is uh, is a person and it isn't just about educating them from the neck upwards is it which brings us neatly into this idea of agility um which i'm so keen to ask you about and before i do just to remind everybody on the call actually that if you wish to add any comments chat add questions if you wish we have the chat stream there we have the q a as well if you'd like to pose any questions for Hal, um please do so and we're going to gather those and then we'll allow a little bit of time at the end to ask some questions of Hal. so um so here but i'm so far i'm lucky enough to be the person asking some of the questions and and this is uh, this is the key one for me you've called your pathway course um the agile teacher and i have to say that was a new phrase really until you until you used it what for you does that actually mean and why is agility so important well it it built sorry it builds on everything that we've just been talking about really it's it's it's, um it's supporting the humanizing of documentation essentially i mean if you think about curriculum um, something I, I talk about a lot is is the idea of curriculum. Once we write it down, and this is curriculum anywhere, in any country, for any course, as soon as we write it down, um, it becomes a cold, dead document. And what we need our teachers to do, and this is something, like I say, I'm in a school next week doing this. We've written a curriculum in the school and it, it's great. You know, it's great. When you read it, you think, oh, I want my kids to do this. This is mint. This is brilliant. But in the hands of someone who's not equipped to deal with it, it will remain cold and without life. We need our teachers to be agile enough to bring the humanity and superimpose humanity onto that document superimpose things like my own professional values the values of the school i work in um an understanding of the curriculum i'm i'm delivering and the fact that i'm accountable and i've got a job that i'm paid to do we need to superimpose that let's call all that humanizing and that's how we warm it up so a key element to the to being an agile teacher is one of warmth and being the warmth bringer, being the, if you like, the curriculum salesperson. But I'm careful when I say that because this isn't about getting fast deals. It's not about that. It's about helping children see the relevance and the importance of what it is we're teaching them. And that might be a teacher delivering absolute you know, dense physics at a high level or a child just trying to grasp where the hell is London when they're in year one in England and they're doing the great fire of London. So where the hell's London and when was 1666 and why do we have to do that? You know, and that's something we talk about on the, on the pathway project. And you talk about, when we've chatted about agility, when we were making the film, I know obviously you also talk about a teacher bringing knowledge of the children in front of them to yeah. it. And that, yeah. that is entirely um, bespoke. To yeah. what extent though, do you think knowledge of the children in front of you should actually be influencing and shaping the curriculum? Or is it the case that the curriculum 
maybe down to the entitlement of the children is broadly the same, but it's the way you deliver it, or do you think you should actually be changing? I, I haven't got um, a problem with a national curriculum. I, 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 I think it's, it's sensible and we, we need guidance. I want guidance now. I feel I'm fairly experienced, but I still want to know what the, give, the, the non-negotiables are. So when I'm teaching this, I need to know what I need the kids. Otherwise, I'm not going to sleep at night. I'm going to be worried I've shortchanged. I'm worried that I'll get into trouble. So I, I'll teach the non-negotiables. If you like, that's, that's the should curriculum. But also I've got to think about how I'm doing it because that's the, they're the non-negotiables, but I've got this particular class and this particular class. I know now, I know them now and I know what makes them tick. And they're one of 15 classes I teach, but I know what I'm going to have to do. I've got me should. I'm thinking about what I could do now to help that make sense to them. So I, I think, it, you know, it used to be a really funny approach as a secondary teacher you might have three year eight classes on the same day so you just did the same thing with them but you never really did because you'd you'd um as we say in yorkshire you'd come a cropper you'd something would go wrong because you can't teach that class the same way you teach that class if nothing else you had them first thing in the morning you've got them last thing in the day so it's so different that, so that we're clear that that is not that does not mean lowering your expectations or editing or censoring and taking bits out because you don't think it's palatable for them or they're going to be able to handle it. It's not that. We're no. still highly aspirational for all of the classes, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, the ability to be able to connect with them. And it's that agility. I mean, to be honest, uh, you know, if someone had been talking to me about agility when I was full-time secondary back in the day, I'd have kind of sort of worked really hard to understand it, but I probably wouldn't even realise that that's what I was. And, and I, I realised there was that when I went, went to work in special setting with um, children who, were, you know, mainstream couldn't cope with them. So um, they're all, they were all in it and, and they still had to do the national curriculum. So we had to think of, right, we can't just say today you're doing Macbeth and that's it, here's the play script. We had to do some protecting in. Yeah. Well, that, um, I mean, that leads really nicely into the next question, actually, which is, um, during the course that we made together, which was great fun. I mean, I really enjoyed, and I very much <laughs> I hope we get to make another course together. Yeah. Uh, but during that day, you often talked about protecting children, protecting children into the middle ground. Mm. There's some really interesting concepts there. I'd love you to expand on that briefly, if, if you don't mind, for those listening. Because it's yeah, I, the, 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 word, the phrase protection into learning, that was something we talked a lot about in my secondary school because we had children and families with low, low aspirations or fixed aspirations. Um, and I mean, there's a whole other pathway about that, I'm sure. Um, but what we needed to do was almost think about, right, how do we get the kids feeling like they can <laughs> you know and it, i've got to be careful with this because it it can come across andrew is is a bit jazz hands and a bit cuddly and a bit cheesy but i think this is the hard stuff this is the really difficult stuff um especially for um when i work with teach i work with teacher trainees uh, at the U at university of huddersfield i work with um new teachers who were there's so much that our new teachers have to grapple with now. If I walk in and just say, right, what you need to do as well is be warmer. You know, it can come across like, oh, how the heck do I do that? You can't go on a course for being warm. You can't go on a course um, for being able to have a good, if you like, manner with children. All you can do is go and watch good teachers do it. And you've got to go and find your radiators, those teachers you want to hang about with, and stay away from the drains, the people you don't want to hang around with. Now, fortunately for us, we're radiators. Now, this idea of protecting in, really, you could put it down to a list of teacher acts. Um, you know, when you're a teacher, you've got to know stuff. And just because you're protecting kids into learning don't mean you're some, uh, I don't know, you're not saying, hey, kids, what do you want to do today? You've got stuff that you need to do. You are absolutely on top of the material. Um, if you imagine, um, it's like kids being helped across a rickety bridge and they're on one side of the bridge and you're on the other at the front of the room and you're getting them across this bridge by having your good knowledge base, 
You've got clear expectations, which if necessary, you've taught to the children. These are my expectations. We've got the expectations the school have, but these are mine. I expect you to, to rock up on time. I expect you to use manners. There's no, you know, that's absolutely yeah. givens. But also, I'm modelling all that as well. I'm modelling that as well. So even if my car's broken down on the motorway and I've been stuck in the rain for two hours, I've got to school late and I've got my year nine in front of me, I'm not going to take it out on them because I catch, I catch myself and I wear that mantle. I, I put that jacket on that says I'm in charge. This is my room. And the expectation is, is we are kind of positive. The climate of learning in this room is positive. And I've got to be the one that sets that tone. I can't expect a, an eight year old to do that or even a 15 year old. So climate is set by me. And another way of protecting kids and getting them across that bridge is just through dialogue relational conversations um the university of california have what is one of their top five um uh, effective pedagogies they just have talking instructional dialogue do you remember what we did last time how are you feeling what do you remember from last time those things that many teachers just do naturally but Sometimes we don't, we forget, we don't see it as important because we've got so much content to get through and there's a book scrutiny. You know, we've got all, we've got all this pressure. And, and these things that you're talking about are not, um, sometimes they might be sort of um, devalued as soft skills or, or fluff, yeah. artifice, you know. But these are, as you said earlier, these are, are fundamental pieces, parts of teaching. And they're the things that actually, funny enough, draw many of us into the teaching in the first place. It's not the content itself, it's the relationship. But also, sadly, I think these are the things that will sometimes do for staff in the end, aren't they? If they're not getting it, and I'm not saying getting it right, but if they're, they're not agile enough to be able to connect with and bring children in to the middle ground and have those warm relationships, it'll do yeah. for them in the end. And that's, that's sad. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and and the, that idea of the middle ground, it's yeah. a kind of conceptual thing. It's, it could be a physical thing in a science lesson when you when you know in 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 safer times when we've got a pandemic you've got you've got your science experiment going on and we're all together and huddled in in a drama lesson we're kind of close we're separate and so on um but that that those things they they're, they're physical but we've got that sort of psychological thing as well we've got that idea of how are my kids stand how am i standing with my children in their understanding of the complexities I'm sharing with them. How have I protected them and how have I made it so Maxwell actually is buzzing about Romans? How have I done that? And there are ways of doing it. And that's what I mean by the middle ground. It, otherwise, we end up, there's a huge chasm. The kids are always by the door or looking at the door otherwise. Yeah, they're, they're just still on the edge. They're teetering on the edge. They're not... <laughs> They're not in. No. Absolutely <laughs> fascinating. And that's really what this course that you've, that you've written and filmed is about. And it's, um, it, it, is, it is so insightful and it's, it's so much fun, I have to say, as well. <laughs> and um, you were one of the first people that I've... Uh, I, I, I say this to everybody, by the way. Right. You were one of the first people I approached uh, <laughs> when I was looking for, for warm, kindly experts, passionate about their thing, um, to work with on Pathway. And uh, I was absolutely thrilled. Um, I had the opportunity to come and see you speak. I do my research. Yes, a bit yeah. of, you know, this, so, you know, who's this guy? So I, I, I was lucky enough to come and see you speak in front of a room full of teachers. And, uh, and it, I was captive, completely captivated. And then when I approached you and said, look, you know, we're making this pathway program. Do you fancy having, you know, joining us? And, uh, and you, 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 were, you were so welcoming and uh, you jumped at it, which I was so pleased about. So did you enjoy the experience? interesting if you say no um and and what is it about pathway that kind of connects with you why why were you keen to get involved well i did i did um and i really really enjoyed the experience andrew and, and it's quite interesting being captured um on film it's not easy. speaking what you believe and it's like this now i'm i don't it's it's not like i'm i am trying to make a living but actually, this is what I believe. My heart has always, my professional heart has always been on my sleeve and I can't help it. And, you know, I could be labelled up as all sorts of things, uh, you know, naive, um, not in touch and stuff like that. But I, 
I work really hard to try and stay in touch. Doing stuff like this, mm. learning to articulate what's going on and trying to pull apart, if you like, the, the science, the mechanics, the art of teaching is fascinating. And let's face it, every, a lot of people are trying to do it now, and that's brilliant. And we're having really good conversations. And all I want to do is contribute my bit. Um, it's really the Pathway program and putting it together with you has been, it's really made me think. It's been as powerful for me as, as it was when I, when I did my mass, I did my masters a couple of years ago because I was trying to learn how to articulate this stuff. A lot of this stuff I've got to say, I, I, I just crack on and do without knowing what it is. Yeah, and I've, I've, I've done a lot of reading and a lot of research now. And this, this pathway has been, a, and I'm sure it's going to be true of the other speakers you've got and of the other presenters you've got. They've, um, it's a, a really good model for sharing not just the stuff that's current but the stuff that's on the horizon as well so it's challenged me actually but it's um it's again it's just developed my articulacy around education a little bit further i'm never going to get to the end of it that's the that's the brilliant thing about it It, it's it's fascinating and it's a great platform i think that that you've set up Great, thank you very much. Yeah, well, it's um, you know, it's not a series of masterclasses, is it? We never, we never no. intended to make that. We never wanted to make that because I think I've been on enough CPDs and come out of it thinking, well, that speaker knows more than I do, and uh, the people on my table seem to be uh, seem to be more switched on about this than I am, and it can be disempowering, you know, sometimes. Yeah. So we wanted some. Um, I mean, you and I have met in uh, I don't know restaurants or pubs or something back when we could. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've had a beer together. We've had a, we've we've had a chat. And we've put the education world to rights, and I wanted to try and capture that. Yeah. Um, I think we have done really, and it's the reading materials that you've done to go with it are so insightful. They're really interesting, and some nice little links as well. Some wider reading tips, the Ian Mentor stuff you mentioned, and so forth. Um, so it's been absolutely, absolutely great. We've got uh, we've got one or two questions to share with you. Great, uh, put to you if that's okay. Um, interesting one from Jane. Uh, thank you, Jane. Um, so, wh- where does the student pupil child agency? sit particularly in priority with the agile teacher how 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 up the list of priorities is the idea of giving the children their own agency uh, absolutely thanks jane for that a par- a- absolutely central i can't help it and i know there'll be other people who will disagree but the child sits at the heart of it for me and if you like um that's not in a sort of again it's not a soft naive thing it's got to be that <laughs> it's got to be that and then around it, if you like, we've got accountability for me to think about. I've got the child at the centre. I've got accountability. I've got my values. I've got my moral purpose, my moral compass. And then I've got the curriculum. I've got my job to do. And it's a kind of, if you like, those are satellites around that central thing of the child. Um, all my work, and um, I don't really go into a lot of this, but I do go into some of this. Um, but a lot of my work is how do we, be, how do we place children at the heart of the curriculum? I do a lot of work with um, Dr. Deborah Kidd, who I know is, an, is, is prepared another pathway for you. And our work is absolutely rooted in, in you know, placing children at the heart of learning as, as they should be. It should be absolutely right. Absolutely right. Thanks, um, Jane. That's why we're doing this. It's a cracking question, that isn't it? It's kind of the ultimate ends. What we're looking for, actually, yeah. is to get in their agency. Um, we've had a, a great question from Roxanne as well. Thank you, Roxanne. Um, so I think what you're saying is that there is not one way of engaging pupils. Yes, that's very true in terms of keeping agile to have your repertoire, if you like, of different ways of engaging them. But but how, as a leader, would you support? Oh. Sorry, it's just disappeared. <laughs> how, as a lead, let me just have a quick look. How, as a leader, would you support the professional development of your colleagues so that they can do this too? Yeah, I think, I think it's um, um, just off the top of my head, and thank you, Roxanne, for that. I think it's making sure we've got our, we're keeping great teachers, should they choose to, we, we, we're keeping great teachers in the classroom, we're celebrating great practice. We, and we understand that... Actually, you know, an an NQT or a teacher trainee, they need to see great examples of, of, um, of, 
of teachers at work yeah. and they need to understand that one pedagogy doesn't fit all i mean in england we have um, the inspectorate they, they, you know, they see our curriculum intentions, but then we have this interesting middle ground of uh, how do we implement it? What's our pedagogy? And I would ask, how, how does um, professional development um, reflect on the pedagogy we're, we're, we're choosing in our schools? How do our, where are our values and our moral purpose sit in our curriculum? And how do we, I mean, so, um, next week, I, I've said it three times now, and I, I'm just saying, I'm in a school next week, and I'm working, but I'm working side by side with the class teacher, and other teachers are uh, observing me working with that teacher, working with the children. It's CPD on steroids. It's risky CPD, but that's what we want. We also need to set up great conversations between our wise teachers, those really important, you know, from a leadership perspective, those teachers we know who are transformative and we need them to have some time to just sit with the RQT, with the NQT and, and you know, we build skills in that way. We've got to have our, our new teachers understanding that there is more than one way there is always another way and that their way matters and that their voice matters doesn't it and that they yeah. their, their yeah. value you know and that um because i must admit i i've certainly worked with colleagues and i myself in my earlier part i taught for 21 years and in the early years constantly thinking i i should be teaching like that person next door or i should become a little bit more like that person and, and that can rob you of your own agency can't it and your own empowerment uh, it sounds to me like there's a course called the agile leader coming soon <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> thank maybe. you for your suggestion there Bev just said that's what the agile leader is all about so and I agree with you there Bev yeah um, yeah fascinating so uh, well we could just keep we could keep talking for hours and uh, yeah. I hope we get another opportunity to do so and I hope very much that we can make another course together on the pathway program but um, hey thanks for your time today Hal it's great to see you I've loved it. I've loved it, mate. And you right. take care of yourself. Is that your house? <laughs> That's a right big house you've got. It's uh, it's, it's it's a rather nice little dining room down there. It's nice, well, that, isn't it? Many many children, as you know. So no, no, it's um, no, it's we're up in Manchester actually at um, yeah. a place called the Sharp Project, which you you know well, I think. Which is a yeah, I think I've been there. Well, can I just say a big thank you for for having me on and supporting my work. Um, just some news from me. My book, Oops, which we mentioned right at the beginning, it's just been released as an audio book. So if you want to hear me reading it out. Reading it? Oh, my yeah, word. I'll, okay. uh, right. I'll try and stick the link somewhere. All yeah. right. Or maybe it can go on the site. That. I don't know. I will All get right. it for the long journey home. That's a brilliant idea. <laughs> thank you. All right, mate. Great to see you. Thanks very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Hal. See you later. Uh, for, uh, anyone who has five more minutes, um, please, please do stick on, on the call. If you can, please do stick around. And I'm very happy just to share with you uh, some slides from the Pathway program, which, as I said earlier on, is launching in schools today, which is really exciting, uh, really exciting to say it's today. Um, and you'll be able to access it today. So we'll just, uh, just quickly uh, share that. Um, so we hope very much that it's all about, well, we know it's all about empowerment and agency. That's where we began really when we created this program. Um, so of course, it's not just professional development, it's personal development too. And I said earlier on in the discussion, didn't I, that um, uh, perhaps many others share this view. I, I, I don't know, I hope so, that we, we've been on CPD courses, which whilst they might be developing our professional skills and currency, they don't always necessarily um, speak to our personal development too. And I think it's very important that we have both as teachers. We know that the attrition rate of teachers, the retention rate of teachers staying in teaching uh, is, uh, is of concern. Uh, and we need to do something about that. And throwing more CPD courses at a teacher who is not feeling it at the moment and feeling disempowered doesn't always work. Uh, so we're, we're very keen to have a look at uh, under the bonnet of what the craft of teaching actually means and it requires heart and mind isn't it body and soul so it's only right that the whole teacher is supported really not just from the neck upwards um, and so we think it's all about your agency your ability to feel that you've got this you've got the skills required to do the job and your skills and your efforts are having a real impact on the students in front of you uh, and some of those things are invisible aren't they not everything that counts could be counted so we need to really look behind the scenes if you like at what actually a teacher does and how a teacher feels because finally if i may say in this introduction that it isn't just about what you know 
we think it, at Pathway here at Discovery that it's also about what you can do with what you know. And that is inextricably linked to how you feel. Eric Jensen, the American um, educationist, of course, says that how we feel is what's real. It's the link to what we think. So we mustn't ignore how we feel. Ultimately, that is the thing that will do for us in the end and hopefully help us to flourish in this career or not, as the case may be. So I think that's largely linked to our personal development as well as our professional. So I set ourselves a core aim uh, and then some key objectives to achieve that aim. And um, in writing those, I think three words really leapt out at me, which was the idea of orientating your career, by which I mean getting a real sense of what motivates you, what drives you, getting a sense of where your skills lie in those areas for development, where you, where you want to go with your career, really, where you are now and where you want to head to. And then providing a, a series of multiple different online courses to help you to get there, to navigate a way there. And most importantly, perhaps, if I may say, giving yourself time to stop and admire the view, by which I mean um, recording all the achievements that you have to date, recognizing that you can do this and you can keep doing this and that you're having a material, a proper, real effect and impact on the students around you and looking after your well-being too. And that's not a self-indulgent thing to say, I think. I think the, uh, the students, not least, also your family and friends and partners at home deserve the best version of you. And that's not just about your professional skills, is it? That's about your well-being, your resilience and your motivation and your aspiration. So all of those things we've, we've tried to address in this holistic program, this online program, taken at your pace, at a time that suits you, so we're not squeezing into a classroom on a Monday at four o'clock with everyone else to see a course that's being delivered at everybody. Um, no offense, that, that can sometimes be very effective, um, but often, often not. Uh, you can actually come back to any of these online courses once you have the subscription, time and time again to write your own reflections. And throughout all of the courses, the space for you to write your own thoughts and you can't get it wrong it's about what you know what you can do with what you know and how you feel about what you're reading and what you're watching on those films um, it's targeted specifically at supporting teacher well-being those are those three areas which i'm going to speak to in uh, in a little bit more detail now orientation navigation and reflection so the first piece is orientation we have a guide to motivation where you can uh, identify what motivates you understand the motivation motivational needs of others and how to speak to others in the language of their motivators, what motivates them so it improves communication across teams. And skills audits where you can get a sense of uh, a self-analysis really, a self-assessment of your own skills in the craft of teaching and where you feel you need some honest, uh, honest support and development. So it's about those honest self-assessments. Uh, no judgment here, it's for you yourself to analyze how you feel your skills are coming along and where you need some development. And then a career map where you can chart your professional roles the motivations and interests that you have and how you want to pursue those as well as your professional role because it's very important to do those other wider interests in a school whether it's running clubs hosting competitions and events uh, developing coaching teams we're blessed aren't we with so many different opportunities in a school but it's finding the ones that really motivate us that matters and developing those because in doing so we develop our, ourselves don't we and the health and well-being goals as well i think how are you going to really stay healthy and have a positive well-being in this uh, in this long long career that you're going to have it's a marathon but it's punctuated by several different sprints at various times isn't it so we have to pause occasionally and uh, catch our breath so the navigation system has a whole range of different online courses which are made up of films and reading materials which come with Discover Education certificates and AHT certificates and so forth as part of the internal accreditation system that we have. We're also in conversation with uh, universities. We hope now that the content is now finished and now we're going live later today, as I said, we're now hoping to continue those conversations that have already started with a number of leading universities to see if we can double bubble, if you like, and help teachers to use some of the content that they've been writing, the reflections they've been writing in our courses to contribute towards notching up, up to 60 credits towards a master's program, which you then pay for externally outside pathway, but to, to double bubble it, to repurpose some of those reflections. So we're having some great conversations. And so far, the universities we've approached have been very, very happy to have those discussions with us and like what they hear. So more on that uh, soon. And we hope, of course, to align those with NPQs and so forth as, as new content lands. So more discussions to be had there, and I really can't wait for that area that we're now going to develop in earnest. And the online community will have many more web webinars and podcasts. We already have started a podcast called Carpet Time with myself and my colleague, uh, Phil Birchinal. So go across to uh, Spotify, where you will see that. Uh, we've had a series of different podcasts already. And we have webinars as well, and many of the webinars in future now will be 
exclusively for exclusively for pathway members so those uh, who are have their pathway subscriptions will be accessing many more webinars and online events and so forth uh, as the years as the months and the years progress so we're building a real online community of pathway members so we're we're really excited about that uh, the reflection piece finally a well-being program written by professor tim o'brien and dr dennis guiney exclusively for us all about how you develop your own critical reflection and find out more about how to maintain your well-being as you move forward to it's a holistic model isn't it being a whole person if you like uh, an advice hub uh, powered by our friends and partners at the nht guy dudley uh, has been head of advice at the nht for many years on the phone to head teachers all the time and he is actually the person who is the, uh, the series editor the lead author of the advice hub uh, developing all those PDFs, a constant stream of PDF documents that are being pumped into the Advice Hub uh, so that you can get the very latest advice on policies and procedures and you don't miss those deadlines like the data census deadline, you need to, you need to catch every term, you know, those important, um, important events that you don't need to miss. Uh, and play havoc with your well-being, frankly, if you feel you're behind. So an important part of the reflection piece. And then finally, the career portfolio. Uh, a unique dashboard where you can track your own progress through the, through the pathway courses and actually upload evidence of your own achievements uh, outside pathway all building up a picture of your of your career pathway so high quality content throughout many courses that we've made so far with many more courses to land in the coming months uh, these are just some of the experts we've had the joy of working with these are the ex league of extraordinary teachers and leaders um, real experts in their own right but um, real real humans if i may say with humility and with humor tremendous sense of fun and not wanting to develop um, deliver master classes at you but actually to engage in some lovely discussions with me filled with wisdom and kindness and uh, together i think we've created something really special which hopefully will empower you and your staff here are some more great speakers and authors that I've been working with, had the privilege to work with these people. Many of them are still practicing in schools today as teachers and leaders and lecturers and authors. So a tremendous team. Uh, each course is divided into different units or chapters and each, uh, each unit has uh, a series of different uh, either films and thought pieces and uh, questions for reflection throughout. So uh, lots and lots of visuals, lots of really engaging films shot here uh, and in the, in the area around Manchester in lots of different interesting locations, lots and lots of round table discussions with real teachers and leaders and lots of one-to-one -one discussions with myself and interviews with these uh, passionate experts with lots of wisdom and insight to share in, uh, in really fun and engaging ways and lots of thought pieces, some academic, really rooted in academic evidence thought pieces um, for you to read. And those are all important coaching questions for reflection to complete at the end of every single unit. So a big, big body of work, ever growing actually. This is just a, a few sneaky peeks of the actual platform itself, which uh, it goes live later today. So today is launch day, 1st of October. Really exciting that this is available uh, from the end of the day for you to order and get your registration, your details, and the details of all your staff logged in the system, and then you can, uh, you can access this soon. So these are just some slides. We're happy to be working in partnership with our friends at the NHT who have been instrumental really in getting this out there and contributing to so much of the content, and we've been uh, working together on this creatively, and it's been a, a terrific partnership, which I've really enjoyed, uh, and may that, uh, may that go on for many, many more years. Um, these are just some of the slides. It's a nice place to be. It was described to me as a, a nice lounge to, to be in the evening, uh, a nice place to hang out. <laughs> After you finish your job during the day, grab a glass of wine or whatever, whatever takes your fancy and watch some of these films and read some of these thought pieces in your own time and you can keep coming back to them. So just the final few slides. This is uh, one of the courses. You can see there's a, an easy navigation system on the top left, so you can keep coming back. And the dashboard that you will get to uh, when you subscribe will always bookmark whatever courses you're on, so you can see, without having to delve into the, uh, into the cupboard, as it were, it'll be front of stage. You can see which courses you've got open at the moment and whereabouts you are on each of those. And it, it charts your progress through these courses, which is, which is really quick and easy. And that's where you can write your long answers as long as you like, and you can come back and improve and, uh, and, uh, and add to them as your own career progresses, as your skills develop and you have personal development. That's the skills audit. 
and the career map, that all important place where you can chart your goals in your career. And that's the wonderful Professor Tim O'Brien, who uh, was the lead author, along with Dr. Dennis Guiney, of the Wellbeing Programme. Uh, lots of insightful chapters there to find out more about uh, how to stay positive, how to stay in control, and how to reflect critically on your performance, as it were. And the advice hub from Guy Dudley, these are just some of the tiles you'll find. There are uh, 10 different categories uh, that uh, Guy Dudley is filling, full of those containers, full of uh, advice, uh, fascinating pieces for you to really get the latest advice on this important career. Well, there we are. I hope that has been uh, useful for you. And I can't wait to uh, hopefully see you again in a couple of weeks' time. Same time, 10 o'clock on the 15th of October, when we will be having another terrific chat with Dr. Deborah Kidd, who um, we were very lucky enough to uh, ask her to um, uh, produce her own course for the Pathway Programme called A Curriculum of Hope. As you'll know, many people will know Deborah, uh, a leading expert on uh, how we can create a rich curriculum. Uh, curriculum is very much her area of expertise, which she has taught uh, and authored around for a long time. So, uh, and tremendous company as well, tremendous person to chat to. So I look forward to seeing you then in a couple of weeks' time when we'll be joined by Deborah Kidd. Thank you very much indeed for joining us again. And I do hope you enjoy the rest of the day. And when it finally arrives, you have a restful weekend. Thanks so much, and we'll see you again soon.